John Gill, 1 John chapter 2, verse 13. Scripture, quote, I write unto you fathers, unquote. Not merely in age, though they may, might be men in years who are here intended, or only with respect to their long standing in the church, which might be the case, though persons may be in years and of a long standing in the church, and yet be children in knowledge and experience. But here it designs such who, in comparison of others, were perfect and were spiritual and judged all things, had a well-informed and established judgment in divine things, and were, in understanding, men, fathers, and not babes in Christ. So the Jews used to call their men of wisdom and knowledge and understanding about fathers. Hence, there is a whole treatise in the Mishnah called Perket Abat, which attains the Apo, that's A P O P H T H E G M S, wise sayings and sentences of their fathers or wise men. Now the apostle writes the new commandment of love and urges it on these for this reason. Scripture quote, because ye have known him, that is, from the beginning, unquote. Either God the Father who is from everlasting to everlasting, the ancient of days, the eternal, I am. Whom to know is life eternal, and whose everlasting love to them, whose covenant of grace with his Son for them before the world was, and the ancient transactions and settlements of his grace on their account, they were acquainted with, or Jesus Christ, the Lagos, a word, which was from the beginning, who existed from all eternity, as a divine person, as the Son of God, co-eternal with the Father, as the eternal choice made in him, and the everlasting covenant with him show, and who in his office capacity as mediator was set up from everlasting, and who, with respect to the virtue of his blood, righteousness, and sacrifice, was from the beginning of the world, and was the same yesterday, today, and forever. It being by his blood that all the patriarchs from the beginning of time were pardoned, and by his righteousness they were justified, and by his grace they were saved. All which, respecting the antiquity of Christ's person, office, and grace, was known to these fathers. They knew him so as to approve of him, trust in him, and appropriate him to themselves, and who obliged them to the new commandments of love, not only to God and Christ, but to one another. And the reason here given, engaging to it, is exceeding suitable to the character, it being with fathers and aged men delight in, even ancient things, to call them to remembrancy, to talk of them as things well known unto them, but nothing is more ancient than what is here instanced in, and nothing so honorable and profitable to know as this, or to be glorified in. And therefore the argument from hence to love those that belong to him who is the everlasting Father, is very strong and forcible. Scripture, quote, I write unto young men, unquote, who are warm and zealous for God, for his cause and interest, for the glory of a Redeemer, for his truths and ordinances, and are lively in the exercise of grace, and fevered in the discharge of duty, and are active, de- diligent, and industrious, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and are strong and robust, able to go alone, to walk by faith, being strong in it, and in the grace that is in Christ, do not need the staff that old age does, nor the hand to lead and teach to go, as children do. To these the Apostle writes the new commandment of love for this reason. Scripture, quote, Because you have overcome the wicked one, unquote, Satan, who is eminently so, being the first that was, and the worst that is so. For he is wickedness itself, he is holy, entirely, immutably, and unutterably wicked, and his whole work and employment is in wickedness. Now, these young men have overcome him, not only in Christ their head, who has spoiled him, destroyed him, and led him captive in triumph, in whom they were more than conquerors, but in themselves, through the power of divine grace, holding up and making use the shield of faith against him, whereby they quenched his fierce darts and got their victory over him. This is also said in perfect agreement with the character of young men 
who are apt to glory in their strength and are fond of getting the advantage or a victory over others, and which is used to teach such as are so in a spiritual sense, not to glory in their strength, but in the Lord, that to love him whom they know and whose loving kindness is exercised towards them and in Christ, and to love him through whom they get the victory and to bear the infirmities of weak, weaker saints to whom they should be strongly affected. Scripture, quote, I read unto you little children, end quote, or babes in Christ, such as were newborn babes, just born again, not able to go alone or walk by faith, but were dangled on the knee and lay on the breast of the divine consolation and could speak, but stammeringly, not with plain, it being as much as they could do to say, Abba, Father, to these the apostle writes and urges a new commandment of love for this reason. Scripture, quote, Because ye have known the Father, end quote, the Father of Christ in him as the Father in Christ under the witness scenes of the spirit of adoption, so as in some good measure to hope and believe he was their Father and to love, honor, and obey him as such to apply to him for whatever they stood in need of and always to put themselves under his care and protection. And a consideration of this, their relation to him, and interest in him is a strong and prevailing argument why they should not only love him, their Father and Christ, who is begotten of him, but also all the saints who are the children of their Father and this, their brethren. And very apt does the Apostle mention this: their knowledge of the Father is suitable to their age and character in being one of the first and most necessary things for a child to know.